video. Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Hey everybody, MG of MG Lures here, and I'm going to be taking you through the entire process today, start to finish, making a floating popper type bass lure uh, like this one. The lures that you see here, uh, all of these here, I have made using a lathe and an airbrush, and the rest of it are tools that uh, you probably would have in your shop. Um, I've also placed out here a couple of commercial lures, and if you fish for bass, you probably recognize these. Um, and these are useful if you've had particular luck with a certain lure, uh, to use that kind of as your pattern to make a lure, and I'll be showing you how to do that. If you don't have a lure, it is possible and easy and inexpensive actually to buy uh, pre-made wooden uh, bodies for your lures. Um, so that's another place to start, and so you'd um, pick up with us after we get uh, done at the, at the lathe. So let me show you um, exactly how to make a uh, lure blank. Okay, so as far as the uh, wood selection, um, through trial and error uh, over the years and also some tips from other um, YouTube folks, uh, I make all my lures out of eastern red cedar. Uh, this stuff is pretty easy to get. Uh, there are places online that will give you small quantities of wood. Um, it's an example of a, of a eastern red cedar board that I bought. Um, the, I've had the best luck with the 7 8 inch thick. Uh, and basically, you're just taking a piece. You can use a bandsaw, anything, whatever you have um, handy. You can use a handsaw for that matter. And you're cutting blanks, which basically uh, turn out to look like this one. So once you have your lure blank, uh, and I just chose sort of an arbitrary size for this that lines up with one of the commercial lures, um, you want to make sure it's basically square. It doesn't have to be completely square because we'll obviously fix that up with the lathe. The next step you want to take is to uh, just um, scribe or draw some lines from the corners and find your center point. Uh, I'll just do it on this side to show you how. Real quick and easy. And approximate is fine. And what I like to do at that point, because this cedar is very light and it can split, especially under the um, stress between centers on the lathe. I just drill a real shallow hole in the end. Uh, so at this point we have our two center points and we have a shallow hole on each side. Uh, we're ready to head to the lathe. So here we are at the lathe and we're basically just mounting up our uh, lure blank that we made. Um, I'm using a stab center and um, it's a spring-loaded um, center and it's really just the right size to bite into that. Um, and uh, you can see the rest of the setup here. Um, again, cedar is soft and it can split. You don't need it uh, to be under a lot of pressure. That step center will hold it in. It's not going to move anywhere. Um, get your tool rest set, rest set up and um, decide on your tools and all. I think for today I'm going to use uh, a carbide tipped rougher and um, some other carbide tipped tools. I'll, I'll bring those in as we get to that point. So um, let's get some shavings moving. the uh, the quick turning and as you can see uh, even though we sped it up um, even in regular time it doesn't take long to turn turn one of these bodies um, this looks a little bit rough and I did it quickly so it's probably a little rougher than it might have been if I was taking my time uh, but that's absolutely fine um, and it leads to MG lures first rule of lure making uh, which is it's a fishing lure I'll explain, explain more of that later. Uh, but leaving it a little bit rough, I think, um, helps it take the paint a little bit better. When we get to that point, we will sand it. Um, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. We're not making a pen here or something that's going to be held in the hand and 
looked at real closely. So um, this is this is actually just fine for um, after turning. So as I've gone through and made many of, of these lures, um, I kind of simplified the sanding process too. I started off using different grades of sandpaper and stuff, and that really, uh, in my opinion, is not necessary. Uh, so I would just get yourself um, something like this. This is a 120 grit um, Avernet pad, and these work fine for me. They're not expensive. They're obviously made to put on a power sander of some type. Um, so I'm just going to bring this down with the 120 and then give you a look at what it looks like after that. So I'm fine with how this looks right now, uh, and I would not normally do any more sanding. Um, when we look at it real up, real close, you'll see there are a little couple little um, parts where the, the wood tore out. Um, I, I tend to just leave that stuff there. Uh, you obviously can do more sanding if you want. I also want to mention that the turning we did at around probably 2200 RPM or so, you could go faster. Um, and the sanding, I turn it down to about 1,000 RPM, and, and you could even go slower with that. Um, again, the cedar's pretty forgiving in general, but it is easy to break if there's too much pressure or you catch it with a tool or something. So um, at this point, I'm just going to part off the tail, and then I'll show you how to clean up the body um, to get it ready for finishing. So we're done with the uh, turning part. Um, so we've got two lure bodies here. This is one I did a couple days ago, and here's the one that we just did on the lure on the lathe. So a um, little bit about finishing these. Uh, as I mentioned over at the lathe, I sometimes will leave this a little bit rough. You can take out every little imperfection if you want. You'll also notice that pretty much every one I do is different. Um, if you're really set on doing it exactly the same way every time you can do that. Uh, but I like to experiment and I might get it close to a commercial lure. I might just do my own thing. Um, but there is a little bit of finishing work that needs to be done here. Now I use a lot of these uh, uh, files. You can get these in the nail polish department at Walmart or wherever. Um, and these are real nice and they're kind of semi-disposable and they come in different grits. Um, and so this is where we broke off the, the tip and these are great for like getting rid of that. Again, the cedar is really nice because it's soft enough um, that it's really easy to work with this way. And um, it also just happens to be rot resistant, which is great if a little bit of water gets into the wood as you're using it. Um, and it's buoyant and it has just the right uh, buoyancy and the right weight and stuff. So it really is, is a good type of wood. Um, and I'll thank uh, another YouTube uh, person, Kermit Adams, for uh, getting me started with the right wood and some other instructions. And if you haven't seen his videos, definitely watch them. So this may be about all I would do if I were just um, turning out a bunch of lures. Um, that's pretty good. You can go to a fine um, file if you feel like you want to. Um, I think I'll probably just leave it like that. Um, again, it's a fishing lure. Um, and the other thing uh, I would mention is my second rule of lure making at this point, uh, which is that a little bit of asymmetry is good. If you watch many bass fishing videos like I do, a lot of times the pros will tell you that once a lure gets beat up, um, it seems to be more effective. And so I've kind of taken that to my lure making that I don't worry if there's a little pockmark somewhere, some tear out, um, or the, the hook isn't quite in the middle or things of that nature. And I seem to have just as good luck, if not more, uh, with that. So one thing we want to do right now is um, drill some holes. And so I'm going to uh, walk you through uh, how to drill the holes that will be necessary we want to have in place before we do any type of um, painting or finishing. So for a lure like this, we're going to have um, a hook hanger and a hook here, a treble hook coming off the bottom, this being the bottom. We're going to have a screw eye and a hook in the back. This is going to be the back or the tail. And we're going to have a, um, a screw eye in the front. Now, in the front I've already got a hole because remember we drilled that hole when this was a, a squared off um, uh, blank so that we've got something to work with there um, on the back what I usually do is I'll just like scribe a little hole 
and see I just did that and then we'll just take a drill um, I might even use or you could use a smaller um, bit for this um, I don't worry about it being super straight um, again going by my rule number two which is that a little asymmetry is fine um, the cedar will take that screw eye just fine you don't have to drill all the way into it but I do like the pilot hole to avoid cracking here um, front we should be pretty good on we can just check the depth maybe yeah that's plenty now this is an important step we want to have the hook hanger more or less in the middle here what I've done is I made um, a little uh, template here and it has two holes in it that line up where the holes for the um, screw eyes will end up and so we'll use that to um, to put the screw eyes in. So here's how I make sure that the hook hanger is more or less in the right position. I use a template, this clear little plastic ruler, and I line up the um, line on the plastic ruler with the holes that I know are in the front and in the back of the lure. And then I use these two little holes here and decide where, uh, relative to the front and the back of the lure, I want that hook hanger to be. So I'm just looking at it here and then I'll come back to your angle. So I'm going to put the, put the holes right here so you can use any kind of a tool, even a thumbtack, and put your little holes right through the holes in the ruler. And then I'll just kind of eyeball it and if it moved a little bit, which I think it did, uh, I'll just uh, fix that up and I'll show you what I do with that in a minute. So at this point, I'm going to take the little holes um, that we put in for the hook hanger, and I'm just going to take a little bit of wood out um, right where we want the hole to be. I don't want to do a lot. And this will just be for starting the screws that will hold the um, hook hanger in. Um, so I made those a little bit big. What will happen, though, as we paint the lure, and we've got, a, we've got a, a foundation coat of a primer, and then we have uh, airbrush paint, and then we have um, some finish that I'll tell you about in a minute. And so these holes are going to tend to get filled in. So we want them big enough that we don't lose track of them, uh, but not too big that the, um, that the screws won't uh, take hold when the time comes to do that. So um, that's the hook hanger holes. So the next step here is creating some holes where the lure eyes will go. Um, I also want to mention that uh, towards the end of this uh, video, I'll show you the, where I get my parts for the lures um, and how to choose sizes and things because I did a lot of trial and error and even ended up throwing some things out that I wasn't sure based on the catalog that they were the right size for this type of lure. So I'll tell you about that. These lure eyes are 5 seconds inch size eyes, and there's the ones I like the best. Um, there are bigger ones um, that you can get as well. Uh, I kind of like the, the way the lures look with the little eyes. It's kind of a vintage look, and I like that. Anyway, um, what can be tricky, and you'll see people do this different ways, um, is positioning the eyes. I've seen people make jigs and lines, scribing lines and drill presses and all that stuff and I gotta admit that I used to do that I got frustrated with the amount of time involved and so here's how I do it now. I decide basically where I want the eyes to be and needless to say I want them uh, perpendicular to where my hook uh, hanger is going to go and I want them towards the front of the lure like a, like a fish's eyes would be um, and sort of in the middle. So I just take a tack and I stick it in and then I take another tack and I put it and I just I'm just eyeballing this to where the um, hook hanger is and I position it opposite and then I look from the top and make sure that they're the the front to back they're even or more or less even and just by kind of moving that around a little bit I'll come upon um, my two places that I'm going to put the eyes and that's all I do for that step. So here are the two little um, thumbtack holes uh, where we are going to locate our uh, lure eyes. Uh, at that point, uh, take your take a drill with a 5/30 seconds, and I strongly recommend a brad point um, drill bit, and it has a little point on it. That's the brad point, 
And um, be a little bit cautious here. Just take out a little wood at a, at a time. So um, we're just going to just make a place for the eye to kind of sit. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And it's nice to have them the same depth. These bits are very sharp and the wood is soft. So it will take out wood very quickly. And I've buried some of these deeper than I've wanted to in the past. So I stop there and then I take the bit out. And then just by hand, I'm going to dig this out a little bit because you want that um, place where the eye is going to go to be nice and smooth and flat. And you'll see how nice this, this will come out when we get to that point. Um, and that's basically it. So this this lure body is ready for a hook hanger, eyes, and screw eyes. So basically what we're saying is it's ready to be finished. So I want to show you uh, a technique that, again, over the years in making many dozens of these lures, um, I created these little holders. I'm sure other people have something similar, which is a piece of dowel, um, a hook on the end, and um, just a, a screw eye that I um, took the eye part off of and just sank that in there. Um, and this will serve as the holder for this lure from now until it's ready to have the hardware uh, put onto it through all the finishing steps. So this is a key um, piece of equipment here. Uh, what we will do to start off is um, we will put the holder into the nose or the front of the lure. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the reason for that in a minute. We will end up um, switching it uh, in a future step to the back and then um, to the front again. And again, I'll explain to you why that, why that is. So here is our lure body all drilled out. And um, this is the first step of the finishing, which is to put a coat of a primer on it. Um, now, the primer I use uh, happens to be uh, this one. Um, you can use anything similar, but it is an oil-based flat white primer. Um, you want it the right consistency, and over time it will thicken, and pieces of it will dry and, and all. Obviously, I have it in a, in a secondary container here. Um, so you want it thick enough that it will stick to the outside of the lure and really make a nice shell, um, but you want it thin enough that it will it will drip uh, off of the lure, um, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute because this is the right consistency. So again, my holder, I'm not brushing or anything. This is nice because you don't end up with brushes to clean and a whole great big mess. So um, here is the, uh, the oil-based white primer, um, and I'm just going to dip this in. And I'm going to coat the whole thing. I know you can't see that, but I'm coating it. And I'm pulling it out. Now, this primer has been sitting around for a while. And if you look at it, it's like gross cottage cheese kind of consistency, which you might say that's going to mess up the lure. Um, actually, those chunks, um, which if I was using newer paint, would not exist. Those are either going to run off as this thing uh, dries or they'll just be hard little um, bumps which I will uh, just kind of um, uh, take off with a, one of these little files once this thing is dry. The only thing I do right now with just a Q-tip is I'll make sure that I don't have a huge amount of paint in the eye holes because that can be a little bit tricky to get out um, and, it, and so you don't want to leave too much there. So I just took out a little bit of that extra. Um, other than that, um, this is good, and uh, I'll show you um, how it looks once it's all dry. So I told you about my handles, and so here's a bunch of them. Um, and now I want to tell you a little bit about this drying rack that I made. Um, and there's different, people do this different ways, and you can look online to see some other examples. Usually if I were making a run of lures, uh, all the lures would be in the same state of um, starting and finishing. Um, but to prepare for this, I have some that you'll see here that are sneak previews of where we're going today. Um, here's the one that we just uh, dipped in the white primer, and you see it's dripping, and this whole arrangement keeps it um, nice and clean and contained. 
um, and keeps the things from bumping into each other. Uh, this was just kind of a coincidental. Someone had given me uh, this wine box and it just turned out that it was just a perfect thing. So I did a little bit of um, design work on it to sort of stagger and keep these away from each other because sometimes you'll be tempted to pick this up and move it and you want to keep them from clanging together if they have fresh paint on them or whatever. Um, but I can give you more information about how to make one of these uh, if, um, if you need it. Here's how the lure comes off of the drying rack after the primer has dried. Um, really what it creates is this really nice shell that will make a great foundation for our airbrush paint uh, which I'll be using today. Um, I will mention that if you don't have an airbrush or you're not um, familiar with using an airbrush or you, you don't want to make that kind of investment, these can be made with uh, regular spray paint from a can and when we get to that stage I'll show you one that I did just with regular spray paint. Um, so because of the dripping motion uh, of the paint coming off of this on that drying rack you usually will get kind of this drip thing down here and you can do what you want with that to make it a little bit cleaner um, or not. Again it's just a fishing lure and uh, so you, you can decide how you want to do that. I usually check make sure I can see those holes and that they're still visible and I'll also check my I'm going to take this off of this for reasons I'll tell you about in a minute um, I'll check my eyes just to make sure again that that's nice and clean there um, because we want to set the uh, the eyes in there I'll show you how to do that in a minute so that's nice now there are a couple I don't even know if you can see this but a couple of these little tiny bumps which I'm not going to do anything with. Um, you could do some sanding and, and all. The bottom, I'm always very careful not to do anything to because as I'll show you when I airbrush it, I'm going to leave that white exposed down there just like the bottom of a, of a fish. Um, so last thing I'll show you for this, um, this uh, part of the video is I am switching around where I have my handle and I'm now putting the handle in the back and you might say, why are we switching back and forth? And the reason is because I'm going to be airbrushing this lure. I want access to the nose, to the front of this lure, um, because I want that to look good. I'm not as concerned about exactly what the rear end is going to look like, um, which is going to have some hardware covering it anyway. So we'll get a good, a good um, angle on the front of this. So... Uh, yeah, looks good. Let's get the uh, airbrush stuff set up. I want to just go back to what these lures look like when they're done um, at this point. Just to orient you, um, the there are choices about painting, uh, airbrush painting. Obviously, the sky is the limit. This is the lure I referenced. Um, this was be done before I got an airbrush, and this is just done with um, spray paint. So it's coated, and then I use some yellow and some green, and I just freehanded with a little paint stick. Um, so oh, not bad, um, but doesn't quite have the the sort of professional appearance of say something like this, um, which has multiple colors and um, has some scale pattern to it and stuff. And so those are those are kind of kind of cool. Um, you can also see how this turns out with the with the eyes just kind of done the way that I just showed and the hook hanger the, the same way. Um, also an option, no finish at all. And I've caught fish on, this is just eastern red cedar and it's just, I just coat it. Um, so that's an option too. But for today, we're going to airbrush this lure, so let's get to it. Here are the lure bodies with the dried primer on them. Uh, I have the one that we've been using for demonstration and then another one I had aside, so we'll do them at the same time. Uh, here's the airbrush setup. Um, this isn't a video per se about airbrushing and how to. There's lots of great stuff, huge amounts of great stuff on YouTube. Um, so this is just a, a real basic setup. I can give you more information about that if, um, if people need it for, for lures. Um, this uh, paint um, it's something, again, trial and error. I, I, I've had the best luck with this stuff. It says, actually, lure and jig finish on it. Um, easy cleanup. It's um, water-based, so I, I 
lots of colors, so I really like that. Um, so um, now you'll see me airbrushing. Here are the two lures that we just airbrushed and they came out um, pretty nice. Uh, I know I went through real quickly what I was doing. The key thing with the airbrushing in general is just to keep the airbrush moving. Uh, I did just a two color real quick thing here um, with the black over the green. It typically works better with a lighter color and then a darker color on top of that. Um, going back to my rule number two about the asymmetry, uh, I used to get real concerned about it being just exactly right, and um, I'm just trying not to worry about that stuff these days. Um, so they will come out kind of as asymmetric, depending how much time and effort that uh, you want to put into it. Um, I, I also used a, a mask there uh, for to create the the uh, scale pattern, and there's different ways you can do that. The easiest way I figured out over time was to use one of these um, little frames. I think they're made for for, cro for um, doing embroidery, and um, I just put some screen on that, and I just roll it around as you'd seen. Uh, again, I'm not focusing a huge amount on the painting technique, but um, I think these came out okay. So I'm switching over to another lure body that I painted a couple weeks ago um, because this one's completely dry. Uh, the, that vinyl paint appears to dry very quickly, but I found if you handle it too soon, um, it'll wrinkle and pieces will come off, and obviously that's not what you want. So here's one that has the vinyl paint on. I did the screen um, effect for the, the scales, and um, this is all completely dry. Now, most people like to sign their lures. I've done this a bunch of different ways. Um, you don't have to do it, obviously. It is tricky because the next finishing step, which is a clear coat of some kind over it, tends to run pretty much anything I've tried. Um, then there, you can use a Sharpie or different variations of Sharpies. I've, I've gone actually back to using just a, just a pen like this and I will um, sign a lure just using the pen. So I'm just going to show you. I just make sure I get got ink running through it. And I will sign this the way I usually do. And I usually put the year on it. Just gonna, 2016. Now, the challenge with this is getting that through the next um, stage. What I recommend you do, I'm not going to show this um, for the purposes of the video today, but is to use some clear um, uh, spray enamel and dust this with spray enamel three or four times over a period of 10 minutes or so just to put a little bit of that spray enamel over that and then to do the next step with the clear coat and that will stabilize it and hold on to it. Um, so that's, that's that signing step. The other thing we have to deal with right now is to get these lure eyes in there. So remember we prepared these nice um, holes and they're, they're, they're pretty nice. Um, there's a million different uh, types and colors and of these and so you can choose what you like. Um, so I got these for today. And they come off of this and they're sticky on the back and so basically what you're doing is you're just pressing them right into that eye hole. So look how nice that looks. And then we'll do the one on the other side. Sometimes these, you get the sticky part um, sticking to the backing, which is actually okay. Because what will happen, and I've seen some people like glue these in with epoxy or CA glue or whatever, um, but we're putting a clear coat over this that's going to seal those in there. I've never had a, a lure eye um, come out of a lure. So um, signed, uh, again, um, I would recommend using some of the clear um, coat over that. Um, and then this is ready for the final uh, uh, finishing coat, uh, which is a clear coat. Um, so we'll move on to that. 
So here we are ready to do our um, final coating and um, the product that I have come to use after again a lot of trial and error um, is this stuff is um, polycrylic and um, it's nice for a bunch of reasons. Um, the biggest reason is that it just creates this really durable um, and nice and shiny finish. Um, this is one that I've already dipped and so you can see how it looks but I'm going to show you the dipping um, uh, process here and uh, you can see that um, that it that it coats it very nicely um, keep in mind again with my little handle here I've got the handle uh, in the nose of the lure because I want this uh, finish to make its way down to the the end now this has been I've done a couple of coats already of this and you see it makes like this funny little tail there which you can leave there or you can file off at the end um, it's really uh, it's really up to you to decide how you want to do it um, but uh, I'll show you now how to do the dipping part so really straightforward we're just taking the lure again I uh, want the um, handle in the nose of the lure we've got the eyes uh, nice and positioned in there um, everything else is ready we've got our signed lure we've stabilized that again I do recommend that step um, and into the polycrylic uh, this one will go um, and basically is just to coat it and then pull it out and basically you want to just to hold on to your polycrylic is just to let it drip and then once it's pretty much done dripping I'll be moving it right over to that drying rack so here's our dried uh, completely finished lure body and um, this has the polycrylic on it I usually will do two to three coats of it you could keep going I guess beyond that if you were looking for real heavy use um, but this is is kind of what it will look like and it goes right over the lure eyes so it really bonds those in there and as I mentioned I've never had a lure eye come out now again we've got this little drip here at the end we'll deal with that I also just want to give you a tip about removing the handle once the polycrylic and all this has been done because I have sometimes turned this and had it tear out the end of the lure so as a little extra step I just bring in a, a, a knife here and I'll just go around and so that and I'll just twist this really carefully just to make sure that I'm not taking a whole chunk of paint with it and I'm not so there's my lure body now I'm gonna take that drippy thing off and again I'm not this is a fishing lure and I'm not worried about a little asymmetry so it does not have to be perfect um, so I'm just taking that little drip off and there's the there's the end of it so there's that there we go um, another little tool that I made that I'd recommend you make one is take a 1 16th inch um, uh, drill bit and just make a little hand drill out of it um, and with this I'll find the hole that the um, screw eye will go in in the back that I drilled it's in there and just open that up. I'll find the hook hanger holes again and just make sure that those are open. Here they are and just those are just fine to accept the screws and just make sure that that this is okay. And so really all my holes are good and this one is ready um, for the hardware. So you can see what I've done here is I positioned a hook hanger um, and this is what the hook hangers uh, look like if you're not familiar um, with it off the lure, uh, position that over the hole and I put um, a screw into it. It can be a little bit tricky because these parts are very small and hard to hold on to. Um, well, I'll give you a warning because I ruined or at least kind of damaged uh, several lures this way. Be real careful with the screwdriver. You're, you're tempted to push onto that um, screw. It's just a slotted screw so it doesn't hold that all that securely and it's easy to slip off of that and make a nice gouge in this lure that you put all this work into finishing. So I'm going to real carefully sink this um, screw and get this thing secured. See I almost did it myself. And bring that right down and it doesn't have to be super tight. Um, I'll also add that I put just using a screwdriver I just put a tiny drop of CA glue where that um, screw went in and it tends to obviously glue it in and also kind of seals it or at least I feel like it seals it and I'll do the same thing on this back hole 
And again, there's different ways to do this. I've seen people do it differently. but And so I've got that drop of CA glue in there. I've got this little screw, and these are tiny. And I just kind of stick that in there. Remember I widened that hole out? This is the reason why, because otherwise it's very hard to get that screw in there. <clears throat> so again, I'm just... Um, Sinking that in the hole, and in it goes with that little bit of CA glue. So what I'm ending up with here is um, just a split ring, and we'll deal with the hooks later. Um, another word to the wise is um, not to put hooks on the lure until you're completely done with it. Um, and um, I had a little emergency room experience with a treble hook that I won't go into today, but. Um, it's good not to uh, not to have hooks around until you really need them. So, um, next step with this will be to put the two screw eyes in. So you see I have two different ones here, an open and a closed. So the open one we're going to use in the back. And to make it nice, I like to use a cap of some kind. Um, so here's a cap. Um, we're going to use this on the back. We'll put this screw eye through it. This is also an opportunity if you wanted to put like a little propeller on it, um, completely your choice. Um, so you, the propeller could go on the back of this one. Um, I won't do that for today, but you could do it. And so what I'll do is I just start this. You might be wondering about the split ring. Uh, we're going to put the split ring in uh, in a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of CA glue on the threads of this screw eye and in it goes with the CA glue. That also tends to take that nice metal uh, cap there and at this point we will put the split ring on and we'll close that down right on it. Let me see how nice that's holding it in. Sometimes I use my little homemade thing here. You can use a drill if you want to use a longer screw eye. I don't usually bother with it. And in it goes. Um, and again, I, most people like to line that up so it's kind of straight. and You could do that if you want. And then we've got the front to deal with. Um, again, your option, some people will put a, uh, put a prop uh, on the front and we could do that. Um, what the heck? So let's say we decided to do that. There's a prop on the front. Um, we'll do a little cap again. Very close to being done here. Yeah, these parts have a tendency to fly around. into the hole that we left there. Like I said, this guy's got a nice little prop there. A little bit of um, CA glue. Some people might say it's not really necessary, but I figure we're here. I've also glued my hands to lures, so be mindful of the strength of glue. And I've glued the props down where they they won't spin, so you know just be careful <clears throat> with the amount that you put in. Now this one, if I have a prop at the front like this guy has, um, you don't want to screw that thing down too hard, um, or the or it won't spin. But it's pretty good. Okay, um, only thing left to do is to uh, put the hooks on. So um, let's get to that. So the last thing to do is to put the hooks on because the lure won't be particularly effective without hooks on it. So um, I have these uh, number four treble hooks and um, a split ring uh, forcep thing. I've used different kinds of these and this is the one I find the easiest to use but there's different ways to open split rings. Um, can be a frustrating process if you don't have the right tool for it. So this tends to open it very nicely and allows you to get that um, do it right. 
get the end of that hook in there. Once it's in, um, it'll it'll move around pretty well. Okay. So in she goes, and then just spinning this around. Um, again, just be careful of scratching the lure with the hook. Um, when you're working with it, the lures will eventually get scratched, you know, in use, but you hate to scratch it up before you even have it on the water, so. Not that I would know, but I've heard of that. And the last but not least step is the tail hook. And I did better with that one, and on it goes. And that is a completed lure, um, start to finish. And that is going to catch fish. So the third of my three uh, rules of lure making is the following. You're going to lose it. Um, and it's always the ones that come out. I say, oh, that looks the best. And I really like it. And I like the color combo. And I spent extra time airbrushing it. And everything came together perfectly. And that's the one I go cast and I break a line or I have several in different trees in the area um, hanging there out of reach. So um, we do lose these. So um, my best advice to you is don't put too much worry into the making of these lures. If you're a fisherman, you, these are for use. Um, I've made some to look at that are, you know, just look real nice on the shelf. But um, these are for a purpose. Uh, so don't get too hung up. Uh, the ones that you think look the crappiest sometimes um, catch the most fish. So uh, with that, uh, good luck, tight lines to everybody, and um, signing off.